Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Alright, I have the uh, MSI on the bottom and the uh, disk drives on the top. So, let's open it up. There's always washers. There we go. Okay. And I think what we want to do is we want to take this B drive out. But before we do that, I'll show you. Uh, how it's connected. Alright, I think hopefully you can see this. Uh, we have uh, the ribbon cable come in and it uh, goes to the B drive first and then the C drive and then the A drive is last. So that might be a clue. Uh, maybe the signals are different at the very beginning and they get a little bit better and then they get best which is how it's acting, uh, or that just might be a red herring. Um, so uh, again we have the old connector style for the uh, full height uh, Shugart drives. Uh, they require two connectors. And the new drives, uh, well here, let's take off. There's a uh, edge connector that goes to the drive. And then the new style uh, for these half height ones is just a very simple uh, single inline uh, connector with, I believe, uh, 24, 24 volts and plus or minus 5. Strange. All right. Now, this thing's still connected somehow. Oh, oh. Comes right out. There we go. Alright, let's um, I think what we'll do is we'll take this uh, take this in the garage, take a look at it. Maybe there's some capacitors in that. Um, yeah, here's a capacitor. Um, and we can check, uh, looks like the resistor packs have been removed on this, which is good. And what else? We can check the jumpers. But I think what we want to do is open up the uh, the other side, and we'll we'll clean the heads and see if that improves things improves things or not. I did try cleaning the heads once with a uh, head cleaning uh, kit. Uh, this is from Hewlett Packard uh, flexible disc drive head cleaning kit and. Uh, it comes supposed to record how many times you've done it. It's a bit abrasive. Uh, it's not the some of the other disc cleaning kits for the more modern drives were cloth where you put a solution of alcohol or something in it. Um, these actually have uh, a, a green strange disc in them that probably has a uh, diamond dust or some type of abrasive uh, in the on the uh, surface of it that kind of grinds away at the at the reed heads. Probably not the best idea, but if you only do it once in a while, I guess it's okay. Anyway, I did put that in there. Uh, it seemed like maybe it did something, maybe it didn't do something. It was really hard to tell. Uh, but I did try that route and it didn't, didn't seem to fix it. Um, so, let's go in and see if we can find some other errors. There's there's also a couple optical sensors to detect the um, 
there's a hole in the disc as it spins around it. It's an index pulse. Maybe that sensor is dirty. There's also a sensor that detects whether the disc has been inserted. There's a sensor that detects um, the right protect tab. So we'll check those all out. All right. Last time I was having troubles with audio in my uh, in the garage here, so I've got my uh, other microphone set up so I can patch in that audio instead. I'm not looking at the camera, I'm looking away from the camera, so that's why it was a little low tent last time I had to boost it up. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see what I'm doing here. Um, like I said before, these blue sockets here were where the termination resistors would have been, uh, but they've been taken out, so hopefully only the A drive has the termination resistors. Uh, there is a programmable uh, microcontroller, it looks like here. There's a uh, um, UV erasable window in this device. It's a 8748. Oh, it's like an 80, 8051 derivative. All right. Uh, just kind of looking around the board. Uh, there is a... Uh, one large capacitor. Let's see what that is. 47, 47 microfarads. And, oh, this one down here. A couple down here. Uh, uh, there's a 8712 voltage regular. So plus 12 volts. And there's uh, two capacitors. Looks like associated. Well, there's a capacitor associated with this. Looks like there's a Zener diode here generating some other voltage. Um, and there's a capacitor for that. Uh, there's some capacitors down here. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. A couple of tantalums down here. Seven, eight. Yeah, there's a there's a handful. I don't know if I want to go digging into those right away. I think we'll try to clean the heads first. So. Uh, you can see this a little better now. Edge connector and a single inline uh, power connector. Uh, let me read the model number. It is an uh, NEC uh, FD1165 FQ. Uh, manufacturer date 1983. So it was very new when I bought it. Um, and it's very heavy. Okay, so let's look at the other side here. Nothing. <laughs> All right. Let's take some take some screws out. Uh, that bit is too large. Okay, uh, four screws and we should be done. All right. Oh, there we go. We're inside. Um, ooh, that doesn't look good. There's some uh, goo here. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> um, a bit of solder here. Okay. Oh, oh, that's very sticky and icky. Yeah, there's some sticky ickiness going on <laughs> right here. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's on the motor that runs the. Uh, well, this runs, hmm, okay, so there's a stepper motor on this side that uh, drives the uh, heads in and out, and then there's a motor here, it might be a solenoid, a rotary solenoid, yeah, it's only two wires on it, so it's a rotary solenoid, 
that engages the heads or unengages the heads. And there's this black sticky goo where I have no idea why it would be there. It seems to be gluing the motor to the upper case, but there's no reason for that. Uh, that's very, very strange. Huh. You can see, um, maybe you can't see. Hmm. Oh, I got it. We might need a disc too. When you put the disc in, it allows the me mechanism to operate. There's a fail safe lock here. So this mechanical lock, when you bring in the disc, it must release something and then you can close it and then things are free to move. Hmm. That black goo is interesting. I don't know if it's interfering with anything or not, but we want to get it out of there. All right. So, um, let's see if I'll show you. There are two photo interrupters here. Uh, one of them detects the disc has been inserted, and one of them is the right protect notch. Uh, so we'll make sure these are clean, that it's detecting that. I believe those are the only sensor. Oh, no. There's another sensor here. Yeah, there's a sensor here that's looking possibly for the index pulse. Uh, and there's two of them. Uh, I don't know why there's two, but there he is. And then there's another, uh, this one's really hard to see. There's a photo interrupter, uh, photo interrupter down here. And there's a slotted disc. Uh, so it's measuring the RPM of the disc going around. Um, and so on the other side, this is a big giant motor. And it just makes the thing go around. And this is the stepper motor that makes it go in and out. And this is the solenoid that lets the heads close. And we have a pretty good view of the heads. So I'll be able to reach in there and clean those. And um, we can also operate it without this top on to see if everything is maybe working right, if this uh, solenoid is working correct. Maybe that's a problem. All right. The thing to do is to do is to clean those heads out. They don't look dirty. Uh, and these guys here, I think I'll just use some compressed air and try to clean those. And I can't really see this one. It's sort of kind of buried in there. All right, let's uh, find ourselves a cotton swab. Alcohol, oh dear, alcohol spilling. Okay. Mm. A tiny bit of dirt. Can't really see what I'm doing. I'm blind on this one. Don't see anything? A little more alcohol. Hmm. All right. Let's. Uh, 
Let me find some compressed uh, compressed air can, which I have behind me here. So this is just uh, a duster. Just make sure, make sure nothing's in there. Let me try to reach in here through the slot here. Just in case. All right. Now, what to do about that goo? Um, oh gosh. I'm not sure if you can see that. This is a mess. Go through a couple more cotton swabs here. Is that? Oh, I think I know what it is. Wow. <laughs> so, when the um, rotary solenoid turns to release the heads, it's a click, click. It's a, it's a two stop. And it's going to hit really hard. And there's a little metal pad here. And there's plastic here. And so it'll be plastic against metal, which is not good. So there is a little hole on this piece of metal here. And that little hole used to hold a rubber pad. So when the disk drive engaged, the plastic would hit against that rubber bumper and uh, cushion it. And because this thing was stored up in the attic, it probably got sweltering hot up there and melted that little, that little pad. And it is kind of, oh, yuck. The remnants of it are everywhere. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So, I will spend some time cleaning that up and getting rid of all of that. And we'll see what we can do to replace that.